We often have the impression that mathematics is about solving problems. And, well, it is, but more often than not, mathematics is really about taking a problem and transforming it into a problem we've already solved. And this appears in things like graph transformations. So consider a function like f of x equals x squared, and with a little bit of effort I can graph y equals f of x, and it's going to look something like that. And so the question is, can I use this information that I know how to solve, that I have a solution for graph y equals f of x, y equals x squared. I have a solution to graph y equals x squared, and can I use this information to help us graph seemingly related functions like y equals x minus 4 squared, or y equals minus x squared, or y equals x squared minus 5. And the idea is that these all have some passing resemblance to f of x equals x squared, and my question is, are the graphs of these going to look something like this. And in order to answer this question, I want to see what happens when I alter the function slightly and see what happens to its graph. So let's take a look at this. And so for starters, we'll take a look at the comparison between the graph of y equals f of x and y equals the same function plus some constant. And for starters, we'll assume that our constant is positive. And, well, well, suppose I have a generic graph that shows y equals f of x. Now, it's very important to remember that this graph is supposed to be generic. And what that means is we should take no information whatsoever from any point on the graph. It does not necessarily mean there's a crossing of the axis here that's above the axis. Any of this information uh, is for argumentative purposes only. We can't use it with the exception that if I have a point on the graph, the x and y coordinates are going to be based off the function. My x coordinate is whatever the x coordinate is. My y coordinate, it's the graph of y equals f of x, so my y coordinate has to be f of x, and so the point of the graph, x, f of x. Now let's consider that other graph, y equals f of x plus k. Well, I know that a point on this graph is going to have x value whatever it is, the y value is f of x plus k. So I know that on the graph y equals f of x plus k, there's going to be a point x f of x plus k. So how can I get to that point? Well, I'm at the point x f of x plus k, and I could get to this point f of f of x plus k by taking a vertical shift of k units. Now here we've assumed that k is positive. If k is negative, that plus k is going to drop us down by some amount. But I've gone from this point. If I move upwards by k units, my horizontal displacement hasn't changed. It's still x. But my vertical displacement is f of x, which took me to here, plus k, which takes me up to there. So I can go from a point on my original graph to a point on the new graph by going vertically a distance k. And I can do that for every point on the graph of y equals f of x, and I can produce my transformed graph, and what this tells me is that the graph of y equals f of x plus k is the same as the graph of y equals f of x shifted vertically upwards by k units. And if k is positive, that's a vertical shift upwards. If k is negative, that's a shift downwards. So let's take a look at another one, y equals f of x and y equals f of x minus h. And so I'll compare those two graphs. And I'll take our generic graph, again, completely generic. And I'll look at the graph of y equals f of x minus h. So again, my x and y coordinates, x is whatever it'll be. My y coordinate is f of x minus h. So I have this point on the graph of y equals f of x minus h. So to get to this point, well, let's see. What if I start at the point x minus h on the graph of y equals f of x? Well, if my x value is x minus h and my y value is f of x, then my y value for the point is going to be f of x minus h. So I'll find that point. And I want to get to from the point on this graph to the point on this graph. And so that means my x and y coordinates, my point has to go from here to here, and I can get there by moving h units horizontally. So again, 
this point, I've gone over x minus h units. I've gone up f of x minus h units. If I go horizontally over h more units, that takes me to x coordinate x, my vertical displacement hasn't changed. So my vertical, my y coordinate, is still f of x minus h in both cases. And again, I can do that for every point on the graph. And what that means is that my graph will look something like that. And this suggests that the graph of y equals f of x minus h is going to be the graph of y equals f of x shifted horizontally by h units. Again, to the right if h is positive or to the left if h is negative. Well, how about the graph of y equals f of x and y equals f of minus x? So I'll start with a generic graph, and this time I'll be a little bit more generic, looking something like this. Now, for reasons that will become apparent in a second, I do need to know where the y-axis, and I don't need the x-axis for this particular one, but I do need to know where the axis is located. So let's think about that. If I have a point on the graph of y equals f of x, if I'm over here, the coordinates are going to be some negative number x, um, negative x, and my y value is f of x. Here's my x coordinate. So my y value is going to be f of negative x. So I'm at a point over here someplace. Now, if I want to get to the point on the graph x, my y value is f of negative x, f of negative x. I need to go to the opposite side of the y-axis, but I'm going to keep the same vertical distance f of negative x is my height, f of negative x is my height. I'm at the same height, but rather than being back x, I'm forward x. So it's the same distance horizontally, just on the other side. And again, I can do that for any other point on the graph. And my graph f of negative x is going to look something like this. And what that suggests is the graph of y equals f of negative x is going to be the graph of y equals f of x reflected across the vertical axis. Finally, we'll compare the graph of y equals f of x and y equals negative f of x. So again, I'll take my generic graph, y equals f of x, and I have a point on the graph x f of x. I also have a point on this graph of x negative f of x. Whatever x is, my y value is negative f of x, so here's a point on the other graph. And again, I can get there by going across the x-axis. So again, here, my horizontal displacement hasn't changed. I'm still back whatever the distance was. But instead of going up f of x, I'm going down minus f of x. And I can do this for every point on the graph and produce my graph of y equals negative f of x. And what that suggests is the graph of y equals negative f of x is going to be the graph of f of x reflected across the horizontal axis. And what this allows us to do is to take our nice simple y equals x squared graph and transform it into something else. Now, if I have the graph of y equals f of x, if it looks like that, I can sketch the graph of y equals some transformation of f of x. Now, it's easiest to follow the order of operations and sketch several intermediate graphs. Just to get a sense of how these graphs look, you might want to sketch them all in the same set of axes, but we do want to sketch the intermediate graphs. The hardest way of doing this problem is to try all the transformations all at once and draw the single graph at the end. So let's take this step by step. Um, order of operations tells us what has to be done first, so expressions inside parentheses have to be evaluated first, and I have to worry about this x minus 3. So I want to graph f of x minus 3, and so this is going to be a horizontal translation of 3 units to the right. So my first step, I'm going to slide that graph over to the right. The next thing, Multiplication has to be performed, so I want to sketch the graph of y equals negative f of x minus 3. So that negative f of x is going to flip that graph across the y-axis. And there's my reflection. The last thing I do is this plus 5. And so this plus 5 is going to shift my graph vertically by 5 units, and I'll end up there. And there's my final graph of y equals negative f of x minus 3.